Hi guys, Jeff here. Today I'm going to be explaining the Clash of Houses 6 and 8 player variant for Crypt. It can be found in the Supplemental Book of Variants and it's also available for download for free. Now this game mode does require two copies of the game and that is necessary because there are um, some extra cards and extra dice that you'll need to accommodate the extra players. So in this game, you're going to be teaming up with a partner um, to have the highest score among all the teams that are playing. Now, you will be keeping an individual score separate from your teammate. However, at the end of the game, only the lower score between you and your teammate will be used as your team score. To set up a six-player game, you're going to need the six two-coin cards with the three-player icon from one deck, and you're going to need to combine that with the full deck from the other game. If you're playing an eight-player game, you'll need all of the cards with the four and three-player icons, and you're going to combine those into the full deck of the other game. Today, I'm just going to do a six-player example. Now you're going to need to sit next to your teammate, and each of you will get a player card of matching color, and the player on the right is going to play with the Duchess side of the card, and the player on the left will play with the Duke side of the card. You're going to give the Leader and Lights Out card to one team, where the Duchess will have the Leader card, and the left player, the Duke, will have the Lights Out card. Now you're going to deal out cards in the reveal phase. I'm using the Crypt tiles, but you don't need them to play this game mode, but they do offer a little bit of a visual aid. You'll need to put four face-up cards and two face-down cards where the dark door icons are. And then where you see the stack icons, you're going to place three face-down cards on the last three cards drawn. Play starts with the Duchess of the first player team. On your turn, you can play up to three dice. Now, this is a shared dice pool. Um, you do not have to be restricted to only the dice that are on your card. These are your team's dice. You can place up to three of your team's dice. And you will place dice as you do normally. You can place on single cards, or you can place on the, the stacked cards as well. Now the stacked cards come together. If you place dice on those cards, you are playing for both of those cards. Play continues to the left, where the Duchess from the next team will get to place their dice. And play continues all the way around the table until we get back to the starting team, at which point we begin the Duke's turns. Now, the Duke has the Lights Out card here because all of the Dukes are going to play with the Lights Out rule. That's a little bit different than the, the normal base rule because all three of these players are going to be playing only on one treasure card. So once all the Dukes have taken their turns, now you're going to roll dice and collect the cards as you normally would. But at this point, we're going to distribute the cards between you and your teammate. And it doesn't matter who played dice on which card, you can distribute them however you see fit. With one stipulation that if you claimed stacked cards, those both have to go to the same player. And you cannot look at any face down cards until those cards are claimed. Now, it's worth noting that with the collectors, each player is scoring individually, meaning they are scoring their collector bonuses individually as well. So maybe I, I might give both of these stacked cards to this player, um, but since they have the pottery card, uh, I might also give them this pottery card, and then maybe I leave this player um, with, with this card here. Now. It's important to try and make as balanced of a score as you can at the end of the game because, as I mentioned, the, only the, the player with the lower score is going to count. So you don't necessarily uh, just want to be giving all the good cards to, to one player. 
So to continue the game, both the leader and lights out card will get passed to the next team and the duchess of that team will start play. And play will continue in this manner until we get all the way back to the first team, at which point we are going to switch the uh, oops, sorry, the switch the leader and lights out card so that the dukes will begin play and then all of the duchesses will have the, the lights out rule. Now what's interesting about this game mode is you can at no point tell your teammate how many points you have in your total score. Your, your cards are flipped down and kept secret for the rest of the game. If you took a face down card, you can never tell your teammate what your score is or what the value of those cards are. At the end of the game, you're going to flip all your cards and count up your score. And after you have done so, you can take any of your remaining dice and give those to the player with the lower score to try and uh, increase your score as much as possible. So that's it. That is the Clash of Houses variant. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and thanks for watching.